Hello world, I'm Nick, software engineer and .NET enthusiast, and it's time for another Blazor video. And in this video, I'm gonna be looking at routing and navigation in ASP.NET Blazor. But before that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. It really does help me bring you lots more great .NET content. So how does routing work in Blazor? Well, I'm happy to say pretty well. It works very well and it's quite easy to implement. Um, so what I'm going to do first is just explain uh, the, the mechanism behind routing, you know, where it sits in Blazor, and then I'll go into more detail about how you can change pages, how you can pass parameters through to pages, put constraints on those parameters, interact with query strings, all those different things that you would expect to be able to do in a web application when it comes to routing through to different pages. The first place I'm going to look is in the app.razor page. So this is where we've got our main routing logic, which comes part of any Blazor application that you set up. And as you can see, we've got a router tag. So this router tag is responsible for the routing that we're going to be using in this video. Now we don't need to go into too much detail around this, there's some really good documentation around this routing component, but I think it's good to have a high level overview. So essentially, the data that gets passed through when you go to a page hits this root view, and this is where you have your layout interaction. So in Blazor, similarly to ASP.NET MVC, you've got layouts, and your main layout is a default layout that facilitates this single page application layout. You can see here, we've got a sidebar and a nav menu. These are all the things that you get uh, as standard. And so that router is uh, saying, pass through to this, to this route and then use that main layout. And then you've also got this focus on navigate tag um, using that route data and it's targeting a specific selector. So in by default, the selector is H1. So it's going to focus on the header of that page. Now you can change this if you want to, to focus on another specific element using a selector, but it's probably out the scope of this video. Now the other really clever part of this router component is the not found tag. So I don't know if you've ever noticed in Blazor, if you try to go to a page that doesn't exist, there's a built-in functionality that says, sorry, there's nothing at this address. Uh, and this is basically where that is, is created. So you can alter this however you want to. Essentially, it's a catch-all for any scenario where the routing can't find the page that's been specified. So we know that if we go to a page that doesn't exist, we're going to see the HTML that's written here. Let's just test that out then. So if I debug this Blazor application, and then I'm going to head over to some page that doesn't exist, and you can see, there we go. Sorry, there's nothing at this address. Uh, and we can alter that. Um, you know, you could put a 404 picture. I know you know, sites like Twitter, for example, they've historically shown a whale and, you know, a crying whale and things like that. This is where you would customize that um, to essentially say, this isn't a page. So let's get into navigation then. How do we move to another page in Blazor? Well, there are two uh, main ways. The simplest way is to use a traditional link. So if I go to a page that I've already created, so this is my fetch data page, and this from a previous video uh, has a table with data that I'm fetching from a database using Entity Framework. But if I wanted to, I could um, put a link on here which navigates to another page in Blazor. Uh, and the simplest way, as I said, is uh, a, a normal anchor tag. So if I say uh, A and then href, as we would in HTML, uh, then I can just specify a page that I have in this application. So I could say, uh, when you click this, go to counter. And then if I then just put some text in here. Yep. So that's the simplest way. So if I run that, head over to my page. You can see there's a link at the top here. Click me to navigate to counter and then it goes straight to counter. The other way to do this would be to use the navigation manager. And this gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of how the navigation should behave. So to use the navigation manager, you would inject this at the top of the page. So you would say at inject navigation manager, and then I'll just call it navigation manager. 
And this is useful if you want to root using things like buttons, for example. So I'll create a button just below my paragraph. So I'll put a tag in there called button. I'll put some text. Uh, click to navigate to counter again. And then we need a click handler for this. So I'm going to go down into my code block and I'm going to create a public void navigate to counter method. And in this method, I can use the navigation manager instance that I injected and I can say dot navigate to. Uh, and then that just expects a URL. Now the good thing about this is I don't need to specify the forward slash, I can just give the page name. So I can say counter, and then I've got some other parameters that I can pass through which are optional. So for example, there's a force load parameter where I can say, if I set this to true, then bypass the client side routing and force the browser to load the page from the server. So by that, it means that if this is a specifically like a Blazor server application, rather than using client-side routing to get that page, it will actually go to the server and do a new fresh request, which can be useful in certain scenarios. I'll just put true in there for now so I can show you the rest of the parameters. And so following this as well, we've got a replace parameter. Um, so if we set this to true, it's false by default, then it will actually replace the current entry in the history stack. So there is a stack of history that's building up when you navigate between pages. By default, that's stacking up as you would expect. To not append and actually replace the current entry in that history stack, this is where you could do it. For the purposes of what I'm doing, I just want to navigate to the counter page. So I'm just going to say navigate to counter. And then obviously we want to wire that up to our button. So I'll go back up to our button HTML tag, say on click, and then at navigate to counter, and then debug that. So when I click the button, we should navigate to the page that I've specified, which is the counter page. Go back over to our page, click the button, and there we go, straight over to the counter. So let's talk about pages, specifically page attributes. So on each page in Blazor, uh, in the demo application that I've got set up, we've got a page attribute, which is simply set up by using at page and then a string, which specifies the relative URL of that page. So here, for example, on the counter page, this is saying that if you were to navigate to counter, so the site base URL forward slash counter, then you will hit this page. So these attributes aren't in there by default if you create a new page. So for example, if I go to pages and say add razor page, and I do you know test page, then we have a page attribute, but we don't actually have any content in there. However, this is okay, because we don't necessarily have to specify a path. The fact that we've got the page there means that it can default to the name of the page as it was created in the solution. Now that's there by default as part of the template because I selected Razor page. If I'd selected Razor component, you can see I don't actually have a page for that. So if I run the application, that's complaining because I haven't put a capital letter at the beginning. So say I tried to then go to test component, then there's nothing at the address because that is not a page. If I added a page attribute to that, I can't actually run this because I do need to specify a string against a component. So there's a bit of a different uh, behavior here. If you create a razor page, then it will have a page attribute and it will just take the name of that file. But if you create a component and then slap a page attribute on it, then you can't just run it. The compiler complains saying that the page directive needs a name. So we'll give it a name. We'll say forward slash um, Nick test, just to keep it simple. So I'll run that. And so now I should be able to navigate to forward slash Nick test. And there we go. We've got the, the HTML content that is on that page. Now, one really cool thing you can do is you can specify alternative page values for your page. So for example, I could create another page directive here and say, Nick, super awesome page. 
and they will both resolve to the same page. So I'll just copy that so that I spell it correctly. <laughs> and then I'll do forward slash dick super awesome page. And that also routes through to that test component HTML page. So this is quite useful if you think there are lots of different ways that people might type in a URL. And in most cases, they're going to be clicking a link that's going to be directing through to a URL. But you never know. It might be that you want to change the name of the URL. Um, you may want to just have alternative names. Uh, but you can do that. You can just have multiple page directives all routing through to the same page. Now, you'll probably have an issue if you called another page nick test because then the router would be confused it wouldn't know which page to choose so if you do provide alternate names make sure they're on one component and they're not spread out across other components in the solution you'll get errors okay so let's talk about page parameters so what if you wanted to go to a page but you also wanted to pass through some data to the page you're navigating through well page parameters are the answer to this. So when you're setting up a page directive, I'll just get rid of this one here. What you can do is you can say forward slash and then you can add a set of curly braces and inside those curly braces you can specify a parameter that should be passed through. I could say that I want to set the heading, the h3 that we've got at the top, based on the value that's passed through in the parameter. So I could say title value, give that a name for example, which means that then when I call that page and I pass through that value, I should get it inside this page so that I can use it in this HTML. So in order to receive the parameter and do something with it, I need to declare a variable in the code block and give it a parameter attribute. So I will say public string and then um, title value. So you have to match the parameter name that you've given. So I, because I've said title value, I just need to create a variable called title value. And then above it, I can put a parameter attribute. And that will wire that up from here to here. And then that means that I can change this to the value of title value. So running the app again, if I go to uh, Nick test and then pass in a title name, so um, my super cool title, then you can see that's passed straight through to the HTML on that page and it renders. But what happens if I try to navigate to the page without passing that parameter? Well, we get, sorry, there's nothing at this address. Because by default, this is now required. It's not optional. If we wanted to make it optional, then I would make this parameter nullable and then put a question mark at the end of that value. That means that if I want to, I can call this without passing through a parameter and I just won't have a value. So if I go to Nick test, you can see there's just nothing there. It's gone through to the page still. It's allowed it through now that it's optional, but because there's no value to render in that header tag, nothing is showing. One of the things you can do if you want to show a value in case nothing is sent through. So for example, if you still want to show some kind of string, uh, despite the fact that somebody didn't send through an optional parameter, so we'll say protected override void uninitialized. So uninitialized is one of the overridable methods that we can use on the page. And here we can say if no value was passed through, so if title value is null, then use some other value. So we can say title value equals title value, unless it's null. And then we can say some backup value. Yeah, so we'd expect that to show on the screen if we don't pass through that parameter. So I'll just restart the application then head over to that page without passing through a parameter and there we go some backup value so you can make it optional but then you can also specify backup content that should show if that parameter isn't passed through the other really cool thing about routing parameters is that you can add constraints to them so you can say this parameter is required but also it must be a particular value type so it must be an integer or it must be a date, for example. So if I change this H3 to something a little bit more appropriate, like a scorecard, 
uh, and say we were actually passing through a score um, over to this page. So I'll change the value of this to score and then I'll change this parameter from a string to an integer and we'll call it score. Now we want the we want to make sure that the value that's passed through is actually an integer. And then when we do that, we all say congrats, you scored, and then score to string. So obviously we want that to be a string, so we'll render points. So yes, we could pass a string through, but we also want to make sure it's definitely a number. So by constraining that to an int, which we do by saying colon int, so passing the data type after a colon will constrain it, that means that we won't be able to pass through anything else. Say nick test passing in 10. And there we go, scorecard, congrats, you scored 10 points. If we try to pass anything else through to that, it's not an integer then it will just root through to that not found logic that was specified in the router in app.razor. So to wrap this up, the final thing I want to show you is how to pass parameters through to a Blazor page using the query string. So this is something that most web developers are familiar with, the idea of passing through a question mark and then this uh, parameter equals x. And you can still do that in Blazor. So if we remove this parameter that we've specified here, and we still use this parameter value in the code block, but we add another attribute to it where we say supply parameter from query. That will instead look for that parameter in the query string. So let me demonstrate this. I'll restart the application and then we'll go to that nick test page again. Um, but instead of passing through forward slash and then the parameter of the score, we can instead say question mark score equals and then you know 200 for example and then that will do the same thing that will pass it through so if you want to use query strings you can use that extra attribute this supply parameter from query uh, so having first specified using an attribute that this is a parameter then specify that it's coming from a query string that will also work Hopefully it's plain to see that routing in Blazor is super straightforward. It's a really nice way of handling navigation and routing in general in a single page application. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but obviously, if you want more information on it, drop a comment under the video and I'd be happy to reach out to you. I hope you found this video useful. And again, if you want more great .NET content, then please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that I can continue to bring you great content like this. See you soon.